Welcome to 52 Miniatures, my name is Alex. In this video, I'm going to be painting an entire combat patrol for Warhammer 40,000, going for the space crusading Black Templars, with a twist. I'm not using Games Workshop Miniatures. I've been considering Combat Patrol. A sort of gateway entry to Warhammer 40,000 using the same core rules, but with a set army list and a smaller army. The rules are free and one just buys the one box and that's the list and the miniatures you play with. Well, apart from the gluing and the painting bit. I never played Warhammer 40k and an entry like this is maybe what I need. As stars align something they're bound to do, as there's so many of them, I was offered a preview of iDemo Games' new miniature line, Revenants Run. Before my eyes, beyond the flickering screen, were some real fab crusading space knights intended to match with one-page rules' grim dark future game system. But I thought, oh look, my new combat patrol miniatures, my Black Templars. So I picked out the closest matching miniatures I could find, similar loadout and recognizable differences can be a good thing when gaming. A flamer is a flamer, after all. It doesn't have to be, mind you, but it helps me when trying to figure out what mini puts the enemy mini on fire. This game found campaign linked above comes with a digital pledge for STLs and physical pledge for physical miniatures. I was interested in the physical kind. And I demo games after an infernal battle with FedEx were kind enough to send me some. There are two factions and I'll just be focusing on the one, but make sure you check out the other one as well because they're pretty cool too. There's a lot to be done, as the Spanish Inquisition said to the heretics, so let's get started. These miniatures come with custom bases, but I chose to use regular bases for correct size for Warhammer 40k. I did get a bunch of STLs from iDemo Games to be able to show you the custom bases, but as it turns out, I got real busy painting miniatures. So check out the game found, and in the images there, you'll see everything on their bases. On my round warhammer -y bases, I used a texture paste called Asphalt, to my eye something that in the end will look more like what's left after the asphalt has been blown away. Just seeing all these bases in front of me and the realization of what I'd set out to do, well, painting a lot of miniatures is my big Achilles heel. And it all sounds good when talking about it or when buying the box, but getting things done requires a fair bit of determination. Quite a few of these sculpts, because of their stance, require some elevation. I use my new favorite orchid soil, some kind of bark that very much looks like rocks, to use as stones for the minis to stand on. I also found this lovely little blister pack of mini bricks. I used these to symbolize the remnants of ruined buildings. The future is, as we know, grim, dark and full of little bricks. Then a final sprinkle of the bottom dust and dirt found at the bottom of the orchid soil bag. This turns into a really fine debris that just adds a little more life to the very uniform textured texture paste. As a primer, I settled for Wraithbone, a warm white from Games Workshop. As I started out this venture, I had an idea to make my painting process accessible. To avoid the airbrush and oil paints, for example. I failed, by the way, as you'll see later on in this video. I guess at first I saw this as a bit of a challenge, uh, that I failed, but I've already said that. Anyway, normally I would most probably have done a Zenithal Prime with my airbrush, but here we are with a can of Wraithbone. And I unfortunately failed here too. I got the can a little close on some of the minis and they got quite a bit of paint on. Normally this just dries a little thick, yet smooth, but with this paint, it crackled. So I did the best I can to sand down the dry paint and then go on and apply another light layer of primer. So heed my words, make sure to be gentle and do several thin applications of this paint if you try it, like a long night with your lover. Uh, but maybe leave out the rattle cans then, unless they contain cream, but that stuff's nasty anyway, like plastic food from the future. Sorry, I got sidetracked. Putting off the inevitable painting of lots of minis, I guess. Now let's check out my proxy choices. 
I replaced these two initiates with bolt pistol and chain sword for these two fellows wielding crossbow guns and some kind of daggers. A dagger isn't a chain sword, but a crossbow gun is cooler than a bolt gun. I replaced two initiates with bolt rifle with these two ladies with, well, what might as well be a bolt rifle. I got this fellow with a pyroblaster for the fellow with a pyroblaster. I'm not educated on imaginary weaponry and not the real kind either, but that little canister under the gun shouts marshmallows beware. I replaced the neophytes uh, with bolt pistol and chain swords for these two ladies with bolt gun axes. I mean, this is pure cool. Probably very practical, like a Swiss army knife deluxe edition. And in the end, an axe is just a medieval tree cutter, same as a chainsaw, but far more crusading knights in space, if you ask me. Finally, two neophytes with neophyte firearm replaced by this lady and sir sporting something that looks very much like whatever a neophyte firearm is. This is my first batch. I know myself. Painting more miniatures than this in one go, and next week you'll see 52 miniatures video made from me hiding under the bed. Don't go looking for cans of cream. Restarting with basing, priming, evaluating paint schemes and ideas after a while just keeps me interested and in a place of fun. Rather than dying of boredom at the boot highlight number 45. Maybe worth trying out if you suffer through large batches of minis. This first batch I've planned to be mainly white. After all, white, black and a little red is what we've got to work with. And so I start with everything not white. This means that any spills and misses with the brush can be cleaned up with the white before working on the white itself. It's a lot easier to clean up a flat white than trying to clean up the possible grey gradients that will be the white once it's finished. All these leather straps kind of had me going, but it's oh so medieval, with lots of little straps everywhere. So it's okay. For all the black, in this video I'm using Black Legion Contrast Paint. I'm no expert user of contrast paint, but I've learned that it's kind of important to rub them around a bit, make sure they get in every single crevice, then one can push the paint around a bit to subtly alter the placing of shading and highlights. I also make sure to just do a few bits at a time on the miniature, working my way around in batches rather than try to cover all of the mini at once. I've also started to wet blend contrast paints, like on these uh, skirts slash loin cloth things. I imagine they would have been black cloth or leather that's been worn and bleached. Blending black and thin down brown contrast paint, I think Wildwood, wet on the Mini, gives me some nice gradients instead of the one flat tone. This can be done to even greater effect using more vibrant colours. I added this combination of paints twice, the second time enhancing the shadows, but also added some type of texture by simple brush strokes. Inside me I was quietly panicking from the lack of colour. Painting white, black and brown is a challenge. But I'm glad for it as well, seeing through the eyes of practice. I would probably not have painted this type of scheme if creating my own. The next big step was the previously mentioned cleanup. I matched Mojave White from Scale 75 as pretty close to Wraithbone and used it to cover up all my brush mishaps. There is most probably a Wraithbone in a tub to buy, but I'd rather use what I've already got. Money does apparently not grow on trees, something I can confirm, at least in this part of town. Money does seem to grow when collected generations ago, like pumpkin on a compost. But I'm afraid generations ago I was not around to gather that pile. For my grey, the scariest step, as it's 80% of the mini, I settled for spectral wolf instant paint. These are a lot thinner than, say, Games Workshop contrast paints something I judge to be a good thing in this case. Different paints are in my mind made to be used for different purposes. One of the reasons why I have paints from many brands. On the whole, I guess I'd have to say that there is no perfect paint range. But there are a lot of brands of paint that all do things differently. Finding what works where and when is where fun is to be found. 
This application step I took rather seriously, pushing the paint to create shadows where I want them and absolutely making sure I get the paint everywhere. Any uncovered patches will really stand out. I never intended the black to be only black. I want metallics, giving me a more medieval look. I started with a simple dry brush, a Vallejo airbrush magnesium, and then moved on to a sort of scratching with a silver to create a look of wear and damage. In the grim dark future, there are not only bricks, but also other folk that most surely will scratch your armor. Moving fast here, but whoever said painting a combat patrol was gonna be a stroll. I hope you're getting some tips along the way. If you are, and hopefully enjoying it, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Now, some red. Yet yeah, I'm painting gold, I know. For a good view of this technique, you can check out the Terminators I painted recently. Undercoating with gold, preferably a little streaked over a black, to then cover with Blood Angels contrast paint, will render this great warm metallic red. I was now realizing a need for a little old-fashioned sweat and tears and uh, brushwork. More of it. I mean, as a person who kind of dislikes the word speed painting, speed is not why I'm here. I ride my bike fast and I paint my minis slow. But I have been trying to be efficient. A challenge for me. And where I'm at now is starting to look okay for the tabletop, but I also see so many things I want to do. So I now decided to level things up a little. A first step. In the spiral of doom that is many nights under the painting lamp and that will eventually introduce the non-mainstream techniques. Oh, and I seem to have developed calluses on my elbows from the edge of the painting desk. First was highlights. Nothing fancy, but going for the most noticeable. Leathers highlighted with a tan brown, followed by a tan brown with some added warm white. The pouches, by the way, had at some point gotten a wash of Agrax Earthshade. It's all becoming a bit of a blur. I added some brown, the same brown as on the leather, to the blackish cloth, giving it a bit more color, depth, and texture. Highlighting the dark metal armor with some more deliberate silver highlights going for where the sun would glint off the armor if there was a sun around, maybe the glint of a distant nuclear blast is more correct, as well as more deliberate scratches and proof of use. Then I found some decals in a drawer that I figured I might as well put into good use. My standard practice with decals or transfers is to first paint on a gloss varnish on the surface where the decal is to be placed. After that is dry, I brush on Microset. Place the decal and brush over Microsol. The Microsol will soften the decal so that it bends nicely around shapes and curves. Finally, once dry, I varnish over the decal again with a varnish. In this instance, however, I varnished the entire models with a gloss primer, because I'm slowly heading towards oil paint territory. Let me explain. A great thing using oil paints and white spirits is that it does not greatly interfere with the underlying acrylic surface. The staining can vary depending on if you have a satin or a matte acrylic paint. The matte will stain more. Staining is also more visible on brighter colors, but most of it you can clean off with white spirit without much effect on the underlying acrylic. In this case, I wanted to be in complete control to not stain the white at all. The gloss varnish will seal and protect everything I've done so far in that regard. I've also noticed that the specific metallic airbrush paints I've been using are not regular acrylic paints and are soluble with white spirit. That would mean that if I get white spirit on my metallic parts, they will start to dissolve and we're not painting Nurgle here. But before all this, I'm going to do a reversed Zenithal. I know, flashy lingo. To get more gray on the lower half of the mini, thus more white up top, I will spray some transparent gray from underneath. Let me try and show you. Here's the mini as we are up to this point. I mix apothecary white with a little basilicanum grey contrast paint, an airbrush medium, and spray that carefully on from underneath, slightly darkening everything facing down just a little bit. White is tricky. I mean, if you look at someone in white standing outside on a cloudy day, and you actually look, going past your brain automatically telling you that you're looking at someone wearing white, and you'll see that there's a lot of shading going on. And I want to get a little bit closer to that. 
If we look at the before on the left and the after on the right, there is not a massive difference, but there is a difference and it's one that I like. And now I prepare for some oil washes. By the way, the reversed zenithal might as well have come before the varnish. In my case, the varnish happened when it happened because it was at the end of a day and that would mean fully cured varnish the next morning. Anyway, I squeeze out the oil paint on some cardboard. This will soak up a bit of excess oil and that, in the end, can shorten drying times a little bit. I'm using a Payne's grey and a dark brown called bitume. Together, they will make a nice warm dark grey. Mixing with odorless white spirit, probably one part oil paint to ten times white spirit, and I get a wash. Mind you, even if it's odorless, I still use a respirator when working. After brushing on the wash, on everything white, I go back with Q-tips, moistened in white spirit, and remove most of the oil wash. I already have quite nice shading from the instant paint and the reversed zenithal. What I'm after with the oil wash is the deepest shading in crevices and such, as well as a slightly more gritty look. Once all the minis are done, the oil paint is settled enough that I can move on to some industrial earth for staining the boots and any cloth or cape that might have been dirtied while marching to the battlefield. Or mucking out the horses. I do wish medieval knights in space had horses. I chose this greenish tinted dirt colour because it would break up the monotony of all the other browns. Oil paints are great for this as well as I can go in and just move paint around until I like what it looks like. If there's anything I don't like, I can just wipe it off with a Q-tip. And finally I thought, well if I'm here, in oil paint land, I might as well stay. Get comfortable. Get permanent markings in my face from the respirator. And do some white highlights. Sink white is kind of a little transparent, sort of. So to get some forgiving highlights on the white, I thought, why not give this sink white a try? Getting the mix of white spirit right to a consistency that was good on the brush took a little experimentation, but after that, this was a real treat. I could feather easily, and the biggest bonus, the paint never dries on the brush. I could have used the tiniest of brushes, drink a coffee, and still go back to using the paint on the brush. This never happens with acrylics. Mind you, drinking coffee with a respirator is not for the faint-hearted. And that was it. We can now look at a comparison. Without anything fancy on the left, a bit of a subtle airbrush shading in the middle, and on the far right, the oil washes and all that. I'm personally glad I did the extra steps. And here's a few of the other ones as well. Now I do believe it's time for you to go grab a coffee or other beverage of choice because there is more to paint. But I promise, I'll move on faster from here on. But before we move on, I'd like to talk about the miniatures themselves. This game found campaign can be both a digital and a physical pledge. I'm painting what will be the production miniatures, i.e. the physical pledge. These are some kind of industrial grade 3D prints, and the detail level speaks for itself in what you can see in this video. But I thought we should put them through a durability test. Test number one. The vengeful gamer that energetically references the book of law, I mean rules, to correct his fellow gamers of the obvious errors that took place in that last move. Test number two. The whack of the almighty measuring stick. Test number three, the wrath of wildly out-of-control dice, most commonly spotted when horde armies are fielded and four billion dice have to be rolled to determine that every single miniature missed their shot. All these tests were performed with a cold concrete slab bunker floor, no soft cushioning of luxurious mats or the occasional passing cat. Yet no minis were harmed. I couldn't find a single little bit that snapped off. A slight coating of dust was the only evidence of my abuse. Okay, we've got a transport to paint. And this is going to be fast, so hold on. I primed this lovely thing black instead of white and went straight on to the same type of dry brush that I had done on the black armour previously. A darker magnesium and then a light topping of silver. Now this vehicle looks nothing like the tank in the combat patrol box. I did have a large choice of more tank looking sculpts in the array of vehicles that come with this game found campaign. I believe there's even going to be terrain by the way. Anyway, I opted for this vehicle because it was about the right size and it looked a bit 
like a boat. I mean, if you're a medieval knight in space, there would be great comfort in the shape reminiscent of that crusade ship, your great, 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 and so on uncle once boarded in Dover. The only alternative thing I did on this was a strange scratching, chipping thing on these panels that could have been windows, only I don't think they are, because why have windows when you have lots of sensor arrays and stuff on monitors that go blip? Realizing the monotony of everything being black, I painted a ton of lines and scratches with silver paint, which I then darkened down and tinted with black and blue contrast style paints. In the end, this gave another point of interest, a more steel-like scratched and worn plate than the slightly dull black. After decals, I went in and rusted everything down with a rust-toned oil paint. I did a dot of rust on every single bolt on the entire ship and streaked it in a suitably rusty fashion. We all know rust dribbles straight down like Transylvanian candle wax when traveling through space in your Crusader mobile. And finally, a massive layer of dirt, same industrial earth oil paint I used on the boots and such on the white miniatures. Transport done. A great little break after the monotony of little people. A way to break up the daunting task of painting many miniatures in one go. Sort of deliberately planning some treats in the painting process to keep the monotony at bay. Maybe something to try. But the inevitable was, well, inevitable. It was now time for the last batch of miniatures. Let's check the list, shall we? Marshal Sigward. Now this massive boss-looking mini is sporting two sort of bolt guns incorporated in the suit, but unfortunately wields no sword. But maybe he just temporarily misplaced it, later to be found under the insurance papers in the glove compartment of the transport ship tank thing. Primaris Sword Brother, equipped with bolt pistol and power weapon. I think that means sword, and this stout fellow has a massive sword, which is perfect. Just uh, don't tell Sigurd. An intercessor squad of five wielding bolt pistol, bolt rifle and close combat weapon. I picked a few with rifles and a few of these lovely knights with maces. I mean, a mace is a mace. I can't not have a mace. I'm not totally sure because my mind is now a black and white crusading fog, but I believe these maces are a pledge goal to be hopefully unlocked during the Game Found campaign. I primed these with Wraith Bone as well, but was a lot more careful in my application and no minis were harmed. I decided to reverse this batch, to paint them mainly black. This will give me some variety on the table, but also keep me enjoying myself with a bit of a different colour scheme. Because black is a lot easier to clean up than white, I could start with the major colour, black, and move on to the details later instead of the reverse approach I did on the white minis. A lot of my process now will be rather self-explanatory just by watching, so I'd like to talk a little bit about why I wanted these minis as my combat patrol, and the reasons are multitude. I mean, this was all a bit of a coincidence, myself looking into combat patrol, glancing at 40k at the same time as I was introduced to this new range of minis from iDemo Games. But when I did see them, I really enjoyed the medieval look. I adore a lot of Games Workshop minis, but I also like to paint other things. And I try to find the chance as often as possible. Most of my purchases are from Games Workshop, but at the same time there is a world of other games and minis out there. In this case specifically, One Page Rules, part of this crowdfunding campaign, has a rule set of one page, well, one paper, two pages, to use for these minis. The 40k core rules are 60 something pages. My turn towards Combat Patrol is that I have a couple of friends that I know already play 40k, so they can teach me the 60 pages while I'm almost listening because my mind wanders to the great spectacle of terrain and miniatures in front of me and the possibility of beverages. I also, big thing for me, appreciate that my force of crazed indoctrinated killers are of mixed gender. The all-male Space Marine Army is a bore. I've made several videos on this, and for some reason, a number of folk out there are against the whole thing. Politics, they call it. What's politics? 
If the plastic miniature that sticks a chainsaw in the groinal area of your plastic miniature in a friendly game, apart from the chainsaw placement, is male or female. Regardless of what's down there, there won't be much left because of the previously mentioned chainsaw incident. Sorry, Branth, but do check out the video linked if you want a slightly more intelligent summary. The miniatures I painted are mixed gender, but done in a great way. There's no size difference, no high heels and roses on the ladies, just a bit more comfort in the chest region. And I like that a lot. Uh, not necessarily the chest uh, region, the tasty way of going about it. Someone please pass me the shovel. Also, this is our hobby. Each of us is free to do what we choose. This is something dear to me. The rules are for us as individuals to create, follow or not follow. Use what minis you want. Play the games you think are fun. Paint in the way you like. Sure, I won't be able to take these minis to an official Games Workshop 40k tournament, but that's exactly the reason I don't go to them. I say spread our wings and fly free. As free as you can anyway, with all those boxes of minis and paint weighing you down after that last spree at the hobby store. Okay, we're at oil paints now. Wow, that full day of painting leather straps sure passed quickly. I did something different here, and that was an all-black oil wash for the black armor. The armor itself didn't really need it, but it would give me a good separation between the black bits and all the non-black bits. The white progressed as on the previous minis without the reversed Zenithal Prime. That would just mess with my black. I did, however, use the same oil wash used on the white on the red bits. As I had more red on these, on armor panels and such, I felt a need to give it some more depth and excitement. I highlighted everything white again with zinc white oil paint. Now being able to reference the previously painted minis, I really like how it turned out. It definitely softened down once dry and was not too stark at all. And then I had a bit of fun. The power sword looked like it needed fresh batteries or something, so I added a bit of glow and excitement with a green and yellow oil paint. I have difficulty doing very sharp edged precise work with oils, but for smudging out a bit of a glow like this on an already painted surface is super easy. And the bit about being able to erase whatever mistakes with white spirit is such a treat. And that was it. 16 miniatures and a vehicle. Painted. I'm still alive, said the zombie. But I'm not done. The final stretch is the bases. Because of the limited and rather drab colour scheme on the miniatures, I refused brown earth and instead went for blue. We're crusading in space after all. And, and then some orange bricks, later toned down with some Agrax earth shade as contrast to the blue. The earth might be blue, but bricks are of course universally orange. I used an icy blue to highlight the dirt and rubble and in the end got an almost icy effect. Weird space dust or ice planet? Doesn't really matter, as long as we can go cleanse heretics or at least find a nice castle to besiege. I used a light brown pigment powder to create some variety and help me cover any painting mistakes, both on the ground and bricks, but also on the boots of the miniatures. A darker brown pigment worked great for further adding some filth to the capes and other dangly bits that probably got real dirty on the last mission. After painting the rim of the bases black, this is such a great step. The entire base is a great step. It's like the entire paint job just starts to shine once the mini no longer is resting on an unpainted base. Anyway, I then varnished the miniatures with a satin varnish with a dash of matte varnish mixed in. I normally go for full matte varnish, but I figured all the metallics would benefit from at least a hint of shine. This varnish will not only protect the mini on the table, but also binds the pigment powders. And in the end quite necessary to get rid of that previously very glossy look from the first layer of varnish. Because I just can't stop. Once the satin varnish was dry, I went in with an ultra matte varnish and brushed it on the capes and cloth so that at least parts of me could rejoice at that lovely chalky look. Now we're done. A full Black Templar-ish combat patrol ready for action. I want to thank iDemo Games for sponsoring this video, supporting creators like myself in the crusade that is YouTube. Please check out the links for Revenants Run crowdfund on the game found in the description. These miniatures are fully compatible with one-page rules, but can be used for many games and 
RPGs, like I've hopefully demonstrated in this video. The digital pledge will let you customize miniatures as a lot of different bits fit different miniatures. The physical pledge for those without a 3D printer delivers the quality of miniatures as you've seen in this video. A definitive thank you to all my patrons. You are as always the heart of all things. Please, if you like this video, past videos or the possibility of future videos, check out my Patreon link below in the description. Patreon is in the long run what keeps this channel rolling. Sometimes the reason why I get up in the mornings for another day of eating paint. You can also show support by simply pressing the like button, leaving a comment or even a super comment in the comment section and spreading the word to your friends. This stuff really helps. I know this was a long video. Thank you for making it through. It's been a pleasure. Bye. Thank you.